Spaces Live. It's the August edition. I'm so excited you're here. Hi, Terry. Hey, Orly. How you doing? I'm doing so well. I wish you were here with me I this know. time around. You're in your backyard in San Francisco, I but I feel like you're here. You know, what I was going to say the funny thing is, uh, you know, as we were doing the, the test, I think it's a, a little bit uh, overcast in L.A. and it's really sunny yeah. here. And this morning it was actually really foggy. And I'm going to give props to uh, the cameraman, Rory, that's sitting behind the camera right now. If you see all of the magic <laughs> that he had to do to try to get the lighting just right, like there's moving blankets hanging out. There's like plastic up ahead. It's just a... Uh, uh, we'll have to at least take a look at Instagram Live just to see, or our Instagram, just to see all of the stuff yeah. that actually goes into putting t uh, together one of these live streams. I love it so much. Well, you know what it just proves, Terry, is how far we've come from doing it with like our laptop, just you and me and our laptops, laptops in our backyard to having an amazing crew that helps us make all this happen. I'm so excited. Um, so for those of you, I'm going to give you all a second to get situated um, and introduce ourselves. For those of you that are new and have never been to one of our amazing Outer Spaces Live, these are so fun and so informative. Uh, my name is Orly Shani. I'm the co-host of Outer Spaces Live. I'm a TV host and a DIY expert. I have a YouTube channel called The DIY Designer where I do really fun DIY hacks of home decor and fashion and all sorts of good stuff. And I am an outer obsessive enthusiast. People in my life might get a little annoyed, but I don't care. I love them very much. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. Terry, for those that don't know you, will you take a minute and introduce of course. yourself as well? Yeah, my name's Terry. I'm the co-founder and chief designer of Outer. And my job is uh, at the highest level. It's like we're, we're here to actually figure out how to design products and experiences to get you outside. So my job is to design all the products that we have today and in the future to help promote that. Exactly, exactly. And if you've been here before, then you know during Outer Spaces Live, every month is totally different, right? We always do something different. And this month, it's all about pushing the limits on the outdoor living room and doing it outer style. So we are doing everything from like casual dining setups to extreme lounging to at home gardening, no matter the size of your space, which is absolutely incredible. We have an amazing guest with us today. I'm so excited. You guys might know him as our most recent bachelor kind of a big deal. Very However, big deal. I will say that those of us here are more obsessed with all of the good he's doing. He is the co-founder of ABC Food Tours, which is amazing, and you'll fall in love as soon as you hear more about that. He is part of Lettuce Grow, which you're going to hear all about as well, which is so amazing. He's an entrepreneur and a TV host. We've got Matt James with us today. I can't wait. He's going to join us, which will be so wonderful. We also have an awesome product reveal. This is a really versatile piece that you have been asking for, so I can't wait to share what that is. And we have a huge Labor Day event I just want to give you guys a little heads up on. It's a gift with purchase. So this time around, when you buy your outer sofa that you've been lusting after, you are going to get that lettuce grow farm stand, which is 24. There are 24 plants in there, and you are not only going to get the farm stand, but you are also going to get all of the seedlings. And it is like an all-in-one, hands-off. You don't have to do anything, and you're going to learn exactly how. It's really, really cool. And for those of you that have been saving up, you know, we see it in the comments here. So many of you are, like, waiting for your outer. We just want to remind you that we do have a firm. So if you want to start paying small increments, and sort of pay for it while you enjoy it that is available on outer I use that in my life all the time for really big purchases and so if outer is something like that for you use a firm you can kind of pay it off while you enjoy it which is so great and then lastly the reason I know so many of you are here the giveaway we always do an amazing giveaway for these live streams if you registered with that free registration link don't worry your email is already entered into the giveaway you don't have to do anything but wait till the end of the show and see if your name gets announced this month we are doing the aluminum conversation set that sexy beast right there i love it so much and it comes along with the 24 piece farm stand from lettuce grow it's a three thousand dollar value which is just incredible terry how great is that giveaway man? that's amazing I, I don't have a lettuce grow but i definitely want one i could totally use one. yeah i know after after the last few days i'm like I need one. I'm obsessed. It's really, really cool. <laughs> Pretty cool seeing that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, seeing it on the at our office on the on the roof deck, seeing how it actually grew. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, crazy. I can't wait to show you guys everything. So uh, one of the things that I always love to do is put Terry on the spot and see if I can get him to blush because I like to talk about outer press. There's a lot of it. But I like to cherry pick my favorite and then put them on the spot every month when we do Outer Spaces Live. So this month, it was all about Outer's brand new products we revealed last month to you guys, which is the Bug Shield Blankets. These suckers are so cool, and they were mentioned in Forbes. You can see that thanks to Outer's Bug Shield Blanket, you may never have to wear bug spray again. The technology in this piece is amazing. It's machine washable and doesn't ruin its efficacy. You don't feel it. You don't smell anything. It's the coolest thing, and everybody was talking about it. And that's beautiful. 
beautiful Ami Desai in those photos there. I love that our Outer always uses like real Outer customers in those promos and stuff. Terry, how does it feel to see articles like that? It's, uh, you know, definitely really grateful. Um, and hopefully, like, uh, for everyone that's watching, like, uh, when we started Outer, like, we never wanted to be typecast as a furniture company. What we wanted to be typecast is as a company that's trying to get you outside. And, you know, how, <laughs> yeah, yeah. whatever it takes to get you outside, that's what we're doing. So, you know, we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline uh, for, you know, this, uh, you know, even this year, but next, too, that... Some, I think, uh, are going to be expected and others are going to be unexpected. I'm really excited to yeah. be able to share with you in upcoming live streams. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. And there's actually one more. You're not off the hook yet. I got one more piece of press I really, really want to share. This time around, it was the actual outer sofa in Real Simple. Now, you guys, this is so cool. The editor actually got an outer and lived with it for three months before she'd write her review. So she's like, let's just see. Let's just see what all the hype is about. Is it worth it? And after living with it for three months, she was like, okay, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I give in. It's worth it. And that's when she wrote this article, which is just so cool. It really is a true testament. Um, I love seeing that. I do too. Terry, I think yeah. that's so amazing. And so it's always been the same thing. You know, the reason we have uh, the neighborhood showrooms is, you know, it's not that we're trying to like market something that maybe doesn't live up to its claim. So even with uh, the press, we want to do the same thing. Like we, we say this thing, try it out. Tell us what you think. Yeah. So cool. And guys, I just want to call out some of you. We see your comments coming in, so please keep them coming. I see you guys. You're, you're in Chicago. You're in Texas. You're in Hawaii. You're in Florida. You're everywhere. These comments, they make us so happy, so please keep them coming because Terry and I can see all of them, and we're going to need your opinion on a few things coming down the road. So let's get started in talking about this sort of outdoor living room expansion, all the amazing ways, because Terry, some months we talk about, you know, relaxing outside. Sometimes mm -hmm. we talk about playing. Sometimes it's about design ideas or renovation ideas. But today, today's all about eating. <laughs> My we are really thing. digging deep into the eating, which is going to be amazing. Um, we're going to talk all about different really cool seating arrangements, and we're going to talk about healthy food that you can have in your space, no matter your space. So I feel like that's kind of our cue to bring in our guest. What do you think? I think so. Let's do it now, yeah. Okay. All right. So, guys, like I said, some of you may know him as our most recent Bachelor. Huge, huge fan favorite. Everybody loves him. Here at Outer, like I said, we're obsessed because he has a very similar mission. He is the co-founder of ABC Food Tours, which is an incredible company. You're gonna see everything it's doing. He's part owner of Lettuce Grow, which you're gonna hear us talk a lot about. Like I said, he's an entrepreneur. He's really like a health and outdoor advocate, which is why he's here with us today. Please welcome Mr. Matt James. What's going on, Orly? How, How are you are doing? You? Have Thank a you seat for having me. On your yeah. beautiful outer and join me, would you? Great. Hey, Matt. Terry, he's here. How are you doing? What's going on, Terry? Good to I'm see doing you. Well, thank you for having me. Of course, happy and excited to hear your story. Yeah, I'm ready to share it with you all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before I start, I have to say, uh, I have beard envy. Um, I've been trying to grow my little, whatever you want to call this thing, for like five months, and this is the best I could do. And yours yep. is very full and healthy looking. So, uh, yes, uh, I needed to call that out. <laughs> well, listen, if mine was as luscious as yours is up top, I wouldn't have to, you know, compensate right here. So. See that? It's... It's the balance. And Terry, it was so funny yesterday on his, after we were talking about his beard yesterday, on his social, he actually put up, he was saying if he could get, there was one particular Instagram account he wanted to blow up. He's like, if we can get it to 50,000, I'll shave my beard. He said he's doing it tonight, Terry. He's shaving it tonight. It's amazing to, to know that your beard could have that much of an impact uh, and, you know, an opinion. So that's, that's amazing, like all the things that you could be doing and you are doing. <laughs> Right, very polarizing. So uh, this is the last cameo. I'm honored that it's making its last appearance on this. So it's, it's. I'm excited. Yeah, I love it. So you know what's funny? I love it. Well, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Orly. No, 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 go, Terry. Go, I, Terry, I was going to say, um, you know, as, as we were chatting yesterday, uh, yesterday, you said something really interesting. And anytime, like, you know, I, I talk to our guests, it's always about like trying to find just that little bit of something that you just don't actually see in the media. And I, I'd love for you to share you know, uh, that, that thing that you talked about with Bachelor, with uh, our audience. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so uh, I think typically when you, uh, when they go about trying to find someone to be the next uh, lead for the show, they, they, they go into that feed of who was a previous contestant on The Bachelor, who was a pre previous contestant on The Bachelorette. And I was yeah. actually found through my roommate. My roommate, Tyler Cameron, was on The Bachelorette. And oh, you by, guys were roommates? I was my roommate, wow. yeah. 
So, I did not put that all right. together. Yeah. So by association, you know, uh, I was I was scouting. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, the rest is history. I've become really good friends with wow. a bunch of uh, the people from his season and previous Bachelor wow. Bachelorettes, Hannah Brown. Uh, Caitlin Bristow. Uh, it's it's been That's a very really fun cool. family to join. So. You know what's really cool? I love cool? that yeah. so much. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I, I agree. It's like pretty cool because basically the, the producers just uh, took a bet on you, I'm sure, as they, they do it in the past. It's like, okay, yeah. what kind of reaction do we get from our audience? And they just bet on you, uh, even though you weren't part of love the it. previous season. So congratulations on that. Well, it's so cool. And, and as we said, that's probably how most of you know him. So I'm sure you could sit here for an hour and ask a million Bachelor <laughs> questions. But we really want to talk about all the good stuff that you're doing and all the things that align with our mission. Now, one of the biggest things that you are involved in is ABC Food Tours. You're co-founder yes. of ABC Food Tours. And this all started in New York. It's, it's starting, I'm saying, because I'm sure it's going to explode everywhere. Why did you actually choose New York as the, the first place to start? You know, growing up in North Carolina, I felt a responsibility to the students that we were going to work with in New York, uh, just having this experience of enjoying the pasture, you know, yeah. having the beach, having the mountains, having the fields, having a backyard, and how it shaped my childhood and the experiences that came from that. And I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything in my power to yeah. provide those same equitable experiences that, that molded me into the person I am to these students that, you know, don't really have access. Yeah, I mean, that's so true, Terry. I know how important, obviously, your whole mission at Outer is getting yeah. people outside. And it's so true when you're in New York, there's so, you don't have a lot of that space of your own, right, where you can go. I, I joked, you know, I lived in New York for 10 years and I had this little fire escape and I literally thought it felt like an acre of land because <laughs> it was like a two by two. And I was like, it's yep. mine. Yep. It's outside and it's mine. It made me feel so fancy. So I totally get the idea that kids in New York really can appreciate this more than anybody. And I know that mentorship is a really big part of ABC Food Tours. How does that all come into play? That's a very big part of what we do at ABC Food Tours. A lot of the connecting that we do with the students is based off of things that we didn't have as students in their position, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Growing up in a family that most wouldn't consider traditional, you know, it was my mom raising my older brother and myself as a single parent. Um, shuttling us around to different practices, um, making sure we didn't miss out on everything uh, because oftentimes, you know, economically we didn't have the means to participate in a lot of things that my classmates did and a lot of my friends did. You know, I think that's such an interesting point, Terry. I know, you know, you and I have, have uh, kids in school age, and you really realize that very fast. There are yeah. so many things that, you know, opportunities, things for them to do, and when your kids miss out, you feel awful. And, and that happens a lot because of financial hardship. So I really, re I, I didn't think about it until you said it, and then I thought, my gosh, I so understand that. Yeah, I, I, and Matt, thanks for sharing that. Like, I realize, you know, the more people you talk to, like, our childhoods shape so much of how we view them, uh, like what is important to us, you know, things that may have been hard for us and how do we fix it for the future generations. And just in that, you know, that little bit that you shared, it does show like how important your childhood was and the things that you had access to, whether good or bad, but you're taking the best of all of it and trying to play it forward. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I I was going to say one of the things that you mentioned too that I think is really interesting is that you know how some of these experiences and relationships changed your life. You had that experience firsthand so you're like you can now exactly like Terry's saying pay it forward by doing these events that you do and really giving people those same experiences that you had those relationships. What do the events like look like? Like what are, what happens at these events? Yeah I'm a firm believer in um, when you know better, you have to do better. And I think we actually have a clip of one of the food tours that we did recently. So, oh, amazing. Uh, See you it. Check that out. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, I love it. I love it. My name is Tyler Cameron. I'm here at ABC Food Tours. We are going to work out. We are going to eat. We're going to have fun today. These kids are going to learn a lot about commitment, sacrifice, and staying motivated. Self-motivation is key, all right? Our bodies is a one machine that we need to keep and maintain for our future. But we focus on our cell phones, but today we're going to put the cell phones down and we're going to work our body. I hope you're hungry because we have Scott Gerber here who is the owner, founder of Mr. Purple amongst other things. Inside you have a sandwich, it's on a brioche roll, it's like best hamburger bun ever. Chips, you have banana pudding, baby carrots, and you also have a personalized card from me in your lunch bag.
gosh, that is so. I want to go. That looks like <laughs> so, so cool. much fun. What do Terry and I have to do to get an invite next time? Uh, you know, just go back in time a few years and, <laughs> and go back through third to fifth grade. How dare you? I think he's calling us old. <laughs> you know, I wonder you. how many, like when you do the food <laughs> tour, like seeing the, the, the coconut water, how many of those kids had coconut water for the very first time? And I know we, we had talked about that. Like, you know, like yeah. the, the first times, like it gets fewer and fewer. So a lot of what you're doing is first times, isn't it? Yeah, and, and it's, it's less about, you know, initially when we were going through uh, the experiences we were trying to provide, it's like, okay, I want to introduce this and I want them to love it. Mm -hmm. But it's less about them enjoying it or not enjoying it, it's more about the experience and then yeah. being able to speak to that experience of trying that yeah. and that's what we go for. That's really cool and I love when they're like, you know, right, right now we're putting down the cell phones. Get your face out of your phone, have some fun, work out, eat some delicious food. That's so great. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. And I know that now sort of another one of your babies is Lettuce Grow. And now ABC Food Tours and Lettuce Grow are coming together to do some amazing things. Can you explain what that partnership is, is looking like? It's really cool. Absolutely. So when, uh, when I was down in Florida this past year, uh, Tyler and I ordered a Lettuce Grow and we saw how easy it was to grow our own foods. And our first thought was, how can we get this into the homes and the classrooms of the students that we work with? And after a couple conversations with Lettuce Grow and seeing that our missions and views aligned, uh, this back to school campaign is really centered around providing access and getting these Lettuce Grow farm stands into classrooms across, across the country. So that's what we're doing. Every state educator, occupational therapist is gonna get a Lettuce Grow farm stand. They're reaching out, they're telling us how their students could benefit from it, how they're gonna use it, how they're gonna utilize it and we're getting it in their hands. I love it. I love it. Terry, I feel like this is, I really want to talk about Lettuce Grow Now in detail because I feel like this is very much in line with you. You yeah. are starting to geek out on gardening and this is right <laughs> up your alley, which is so awesome. I just want to show you guys. So this is the Lettuce Grow farm stand. This came to the outer roof deck only three <laughs> weeks ago with just seedlings, which is what it arrives in, just these seedlings, three weeks. And this is what Crazy. this looks like. It is beautiful. This is amazing. And I, I mean, it's 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 just such a cool thing. And like you mentioned, uh, you know, I, I thought one of the one of the elements of this that I think is so cool is that your relationship with Lettuce Grow is actually something that started long before The Bachelor. This isn't an influencer relationship. This is something you've been involved with for a long time. Yep. And I mean, they just lucked out. You know, I guess that you were roommates <laughs> with Tyler Cameron. They, they sort of scored big there. But right. this is a relationship you've had for a long time. Yeah, and that's why I think it's it's so it being so organic is why I think we're able to make as much impact as we have so far. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're less focused on uh, the metrics and impressions and we're more focused on the mission. And the mission is to provide healthy food and access to students across the country. Yeah. Terry, I know you've got some really cool thoughts on, on gardening, which is why you're becoming so in love with it. Can you share some Yeah, I mean, that? I am absolutely like an early student of gardening, but I am trying to learn as much as I can. I'm studying all about companion, companion plants right now, but hopefully, uh, you know, the audience can see like why we had, why we have you on, Matt. And, you know, gardening, when you think about uh, just gardening in general, like if we're on a mission to get people outside into your backyards, sure, today we have... Um, furniture that goes in your lounge. Uh, that's kind of an, uh, a passive thing that you do, but if we're trying to get you outside longer, gardening is such a great way to do it, you know, whether it's uh, family and kids, but like getting your hands dirty, like it's active. You're actually outside, you're enjoying yourself. So hopefully you see that's, that's why like we are so excited about talking to you, Matt, and talking about Let Us Grow. Yeah, and I gotta say, for those of us that don't really want to uh, do the active part and are kind of just a fan of the passive, this sucker right here is kind of perfect. It does all the work. I love it. It makes me so excited. Can you explain like how this works? Because this is really, really cool. It's like you don't have to do anything. Absolutely. Yeah, Corinne actually commented. I saw your comment, Corinne. You said how luscious this looks. If you were here in person, you'd be taking pieces of lettuce off this farm saying it's it's even more succulent in person. Yeah. How it works is this is full of water. It's filled up once a week, depending on where you are. If you're in Florida, maybe more frequently, but there's a pump in this that pumps water all the way up to the top and it spins around and it trickles down to all the different seedling pods 
throughout the course of the farm stand. So you can add more. It goes up to 36. Oh. You can put more uh, seedling pads on and uh, you can grow continuously wherever you're at. I think that's the coolest thing is not only does it water itself, but it waters itself specifically based off where you are. <laughs> like it is the most passive gardening, <laughs> Terry. This is my kind of gardening. You, know you make I mean? it easy. That's important, right? Like for many, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, there's this much to have to do. You have to get soil and, and, and do regular waterings. Like. I think this has a really easy entry into gardening and hopefully it grows from there. So I think this is awesome. Yeah, what, what would be your favorite thing to, to plant? Um, that's a great question. I saw one more question. It said, how often do you replant? Oh. Uh, typically, uh, it depends on what you want to harvest. A lot of this stuff's ready to eat, but if you let it go a little bit longer than three weeks, so three to five weeks, uh, depending on what you're growing, what the sunlight looks like and uh, how often you're watering and making sure that you're staying on top of it. Um, my favorite, if it's in season, is the berries. Mm. I love the strawberries, the goji berry, everything that goes into uh, the seasonal packets are what I look for. Yeah. Uh, if it's not in season, then I go, I've become a big fan of the butter lettuce and I just love the eggplant as well because it's so versatile. Um, I'm a big chicken parm guy and making an eggplant parm has been a, a, an excellent yes. substitute for you know uh, a vegan option as well as um, uh, uh, meal prep. I do a lot of meal prep and so when I'm smart. dicing up the eggplant and putting them in the, uh, the oven to bake, it makes it very easy to, to portion out meals throughout the week. I mean, eggplant? Like, that's crazy to imagine an eggplant coming right. out of here. Right? Am I crazy? That, that's, that's just incredible. Yeah. <laughs> really. Terry, what would you plant? What do you think your favorite thing Wow, is just uh, hearing Matt, what you said, you've changed my, my mind a little bit. Um, like, I actually found a place uh, where I take Piper and Jasper on the weekends, and we found a little raspberry patch, believe it or not. And, like, we, we'll go pick stuff, but uh, my wife and uh, my mother-in-law, don't, don't eat that because maybe a dog peed on it, but uh, now <laughs> I actually think I, I would I also add um, like berries to it, but uh, I was originally thinking sugar snap peas and sugar snap mm -hmm. peas because, uh, you know, growing, I grew up in Delaware and I remember like growing sugar snap vines and just picking them right off and it was so sweet, so crispy, so tasty. So that, that those would be my favorites. That's, that's real, I love that, that sounds delicious. I'm seeing some people write like, ooh, eggplant parm, my favorite. I'd love to know guys, right now, if you can comment, what would be some of the plants that you would put in your seedlings? What would you pick to put in your lettuce grow if you win the giveaway and you get it? And I also just wanna uh, call out Jennifer Miller. She's saying, I teach greenhouse to special needs students in Utah. We'd love you to vid visit us with lettuce grow. Wow. Awesome. That's amazing. Awesome. Just calling that out. If we wanna search for Jennifer Miller's name later, make a little connect. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful, Jennifer. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, well guys, I wanna talk real quick while we see some ooh, cucumber, kale, zucchini, awesome. Keep them coming. We're gonna read all of these. I wanna talk a little bit. We've got our food now. We've got our fresh homegrown food. Now it's time to enjoy it and to actually eat. Alfresco dining is uh, is where it's at. And we put two of our favorite outer designers, Sarah Ann and Tabitha, who you've seen on the show, both of them, we pitted them head to head and we did a design off. We said, if you could create any kind of alfresco dining with the outer, which you guys know is modular, what would you do? How would you create it? Let's take a look at Sarah Ann. Let's see what her design was. Okay, so this is the CAD. This is the design. Looks like maybe love seats, two love seats, and the teak, yes, the teak concrete inlay coffee table. Amazing. Okay, so let's see what this actually looks like, all vibey. Oh, wow. That is oh my, my piece. Wow. Definitely. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> that is gorgeous. That's like double date vibes. Totally, it is. And isn't that cool? Look at the inlay of the coffee tables, which is the one we have right here, which is concrete, is being used as like a giant charcuterie board. Ooh, I'm familiar with those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That is, that's a really, really cool vibe. I love that. Okay, let's see what Tabitha did. Oh, I think that I'm going to like this one. Uh, Definitely mm. over the top. This is amazing. Look at this giant circle, wicker armless chairs. Okay, let's see what this actually looks like. I can't imagine what this is going to come together like. Oh that my is God. just an out, a, a wow, wow moment. Imagine that with wow. a nice fire pit, round fire pit in the middle. Oh man. I'm seeing like I'm seeing like a major like book club night or like a big conversation. Like a, yeah. you put that solo fire pit in the middle and you've got like a whole situation happening. Okay, we need to know, guys, I want you all to vote which one is your favorite. Sarah Ann was sort of like the little date night, con huh? you know, maybe double date night, and then this giant conversation circle. Which one would you do for your alfresco dining? Also, Matt, what would you pick? I mean, 
I love both. Uh, Sarah Ann's is set up for a nice double date. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'd am gonna. i probably go with Tabitha's. You know, that setup is more inducive for the social gatherings that we like to have at our apartment. And um, I'd love to have something like that outdoors and maybe a good Cards Against Manity game, so. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Terry, Terry, which is yeah, your favorite? Uh, I have to think about that, but uh, you know, if I think about my life and the way I like to, you know, spend time with friends and loved ones, um, I'm a little bit more introverted. And uh, when we have people over, usually it's a smaller, more intimate gathering. So I think I'm going to go with the the two love seats opposing each other. Ooh! Oh my God, are we tied? Okay. Listen, okay, Terry. You... <laughs> listen, there okay, Terry. there can be no ties at outer. I must break the tie. Uh oh. Okay, okay. This is what I'm going to say, you guys. This is what I'm going to say. I'm really excited to start having parties. Okay. Oh, just really I just throwing all going. the parties. Okay. So I, I am going to go with the big old conversation circle. Really have at it. <laughs> Little table with individual glass of wine. I like that. I'm into it. I got to say, though, I love all of these. I saw one that said Sarah Ann is a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> It's so great. These are absolutely amazing. Okay, we're dying to do some Q&A. We see so many questions coming in and we want to designate a little bit of time. Are you game to stay? Of course, I'm here. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's see who our first question is from. Alrighty, this one is from Judy Chen. I have the Lettuce Go Farm stand and I'm growing with it indoors all year. Oh, just a happy comment. Love that. Thank you for sharing, Judy. I love that. All right, let's take a look at our next one. I think an interesting comment there was that she grows indoors. A lot of people were asking if yeah. you can grow indoor. There's lights that go, that you can order that go on your lettuce grow farm stand. If you- They can attach to it? They can attach Get to it. Town. Yeah, wow. they go in between and you can have them on each layer and you can grow indoor or outdoor. That's incredible. And that's also, cause you talked about it's, it's what's the term for it? Hydro Hydroponic farming. What does that mean exactly? Uh, water and electricity. No so soil. Cool. Yeah. So cool. right? Ah, here we go. Maybe a little tech glitch, no but there soil. we go. Patrick Gosselin, I have the lettuce grow with lights in my basement. We grow amazing greens and herbs. I love that. This is amazing. You guys all you don't have any questions. You guys know what yeah, you're talking about here. Yeah. Let's see if we have any more. In the meantime, we're also going to be looking at some of these comments. Um, can you do pepper on the lettuce grow? That's very cool. Um, looking at some of these down here. Oh, are there different sizes for different spaces? That's just height, right? Right, exactly. So if you uh if you have a bigger family or if you're trying to uh, share some of what you're growing with your neighbors, then you can add more seedling tops on top and make it really community based. So that's a very cool idea. Oh, here we go. Soldier of Thunder. I absolutely love this. It saves on water too, right? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the cool things about it. It's, it's, it's exponentially less water used in the growing process. And that's why I think that going forward, as we're looking for sustainable options in agriculture, yeah. uh, we're going to see more of these vertical farms pop up in warehouses all across the world. That's that. I mean, it makes so much sense. And is it something that you, uh, does the water generally running through? Like how often do you add your water? I guess would be the so, question. Down in Florida, we did it a little bit more frequently than once a week. But if you're somewhere where the sunlight isn't as powerful as it is down in Florida, uh, probably a little bit less than like one, like a week in a few days. Uh, but they, they recommend every week. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, I see one here that says, is it easy to move? If we keep it indoors in the summer, can we bring it out in the winter? What I would recommend is uh, we have a little cart with wheels on it. So we went to Home Depot, got like a $10 so cart, smart. and we just rotate it around. So if we're having a party, we might make it a centerpiece. We might put it in the corner. Stop it. So, yeah, I would recommend getting your little cart. You know, the ones that used to ride when you were yeah, little. Yeah. So we get one of those. Hey, Matt, I love that idea. I have a question for you, Matt. I was thinking about this, which is, you know, like I have a, you know, um, family of four, two young kids. Like if I got, what would you recommend? Like, well, would, how much would, I would we recommend? Get? I would recommend starting with your, your standard, your standard unit, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, I think that people are surprised with how much food you can actually grow on a farm stand. Mm -hmm. And once you see that, then for someone like myself, my mind went to what we could do for a community. What if, if we had a, uh, a community garden full of oh. lettuce grow farm stands and people coming and, and this like share cropper mentality. Uh, it's, it's honestly incredible how much food you can grow and how versatile you can how versatile your meals can become solely off of what you're using your farm stand for. Very cool. That's that's really interesting. I just saw a question. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I think it's a, a great question is, what if certain 
veggies or greens require a different amount of sunlight than something else? Is it a matter of like planting the backside that's right. more in the shade? Is that the way that it works? So I would say, for instance, the eggplant. I, t I tend to put my eggplant on the bottom because when they grow, you know, they, they, they need their yep. space on the if you're growing them at the top, they're gonna start Smush to smush everything. Exactly. Else. Uh, yeah, you you become strategic. You have chives that like you know kind of become pretty uh, grown out uh, a lot quicker than some of the other yeah. vegetables you're yeah. planting. So there's definitely strategy behind it. Yeah. And uh, as you as you plant, the cool thing is you can just pop out these seedlings and place them strategically all across the the, the farm stand. It's not you're not married to a location. Uh, we could pop this out right now and put it up top, or we could pop this out and put it in the back. Oh, it's very cool. easy. Yeah. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle. I know we have another question. I want to take a look at that one. Alrighty, Ashley, do herbs work well too, or is it really just for larger plants and produce? I would say that you could grow. You could grow You're, pretty much anything. You're like, that, I want to say anything. <laughs> pretty much anything that does, like you couldn't grow beets, obviously, because yeah. you know they, they need to be in the soil, but. Yeah. Um, herbs, uh, everything does well. I haven't had a problem with anything, and, and the Lettuce Grow website has over 200 seedlings that you could choose from to put in your in your uh, Lettuce Grow farm stand. So I don't think you'd have a problem finding something within those 200 plant uh, 200 seedlings that fits into what you're looking to plant and what you're looking to use and utilize in your cooking and uh, you know uh, yeah. meals with the family. I love that. All right, let's take a look at our next question. All righty, Angelica, is there a technique or certain seedlings that should be planted to keep the farm stand beautifully pruned and polished? Ah, if you want to have a centerpiece like Matt here, <laughs> eh? I see where you're coming from. It, it really just depends on what you're looking to, uh, on, on your utilization for it. You know, some, some, a, a lot of growers use their farm stands as, 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 as a grocery store. You know, mm -hmm. they, they don't buy X, Y, Z throughout the week because they're, they're plucking off their farm stand. Um, is there if, if, if you don't maintain it it will become a jungle so <laughs> i would recommend terry that if you're getting one for your family yeah. you know your kids are going to be constantly monitoring it like it's not like the toy that you give them and they forget about they're they're going to be eating these foods so they're going to be like dad look look like this yeah is, is it ready to go yet it's, it's like no another week and then and they're excited about eating healthy which is like what what better thing for your kids than yeah. them yeah. being excited about eating fruits and vegetables. That's exactly one of the reasons why the ABC food tours with this in the classroom, like I can just, I can just see it. It's incredible. Let's take a look. I know we have another, another great question. All righty, Alicia, amen. We can inspire these kids to put down their tech by engaging them and more importantly, exposing them to the future and how they can make a difference. That's so true. It's doing, I mean, it's going to do so much good. And we were talking about this yesterday about, you know, there's always that old adage of like, if you let your kids help you cook, they're going to be more inclined to eat newer foods, taste healthier things. And I would think that, like, I can imagine my son and daughter flipping out over like ripping things off that right. they then get to cut and eat. Yep. Just the novelty of it. And then it creates such healthy food habits moving forward. Right. It's and, really, really cool. And the cool thing about Lettuce Grow, they've actually integrated tech into their application on their phone. So you can take pictures of, different vegetables or fruits that you're growing if you forget what you've grown and it will tell you what with pretty close certainty what you're growing it's like what is this oh, leaf cool. and like and you mm -hmm. take a picture of it, it's like oh you know you're actually growing butter lettuce or this is xyz uh same with uh reminders on hey just so you know um the the squat uh the, the eggplant that you planted three weeks ago is about to be ready to harvest so they're continuously updating you it, it couldn't be easier yeah it couldn't be easier they make it very seamless i mean really for Lazy McGee over here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. Let's take a look. All righty. Silk Mist. What a name. Do strawberries, cucumbers, or other climbing, climbing plants grow well in a lettuce grow? Absolutely. You have to make sure that, one, they're in season. Two, you have the proper sunlight to maintain something that needs to have that type of, um, of nourishment, and you're on top of the watering. Uh, other than that, yeah, if it's in season, then it's going to grow perfectly. You know, I don't know if it would grow well uh, in, a, in a very dimly lit, like, uh, not tropical climate, but uh, yeah. they can grow. If, if in season with the right circumstances, you could grow everything perfectly if it's on the website. I mean, I just have to say, I just want to like call attention to this. We threw a lot of questions. At, none of these questions were like, hey, tell us the six questions you know the answers to. Like, <laughs> you so deeply know this brand, know this process, know the structure of how everything works. Like, you can tell this is such a part of your life. It's really, really cool 
to see and it makes me feel like I could learn this. Like gardening to me is such an overwhelming thing. This feels like a really great like baby step entry point into making this a part of my regular life. You know, you have such yeah. a great way of explaining it. Thank you. It's no, really it's, cool. It's, it's honestly comes from um, running into similar issues when you're looking to, you know, uh, there's times uh, where I'm craving strawberries and, and I might do three whole uh, three whole rings of, of, of planting strawberries. And uh, there's a there's an incredible community built within the Lettuce Grow Farm Stand that, yeah. app and um, uh, ecosystem on, on social media. So if you have any questions, you know, people are sending DMs and they're sending gardening tips. Someone sent me like a, 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 a PDF. Uh, Crystal <laughs> Lee's friend um, sent me a, pist uh, a PDF of, of how to, to, to to farm and harvest certain plants properly on the on the lettuce grow just goes to show how yeah. deeply rooted this is in yeah. people's lives. And I gotta say, we've got a comment here saying, my son loves it, he calls it Miss Frizzle. So you can also, <laughs> you can also name yours. It becomes part of the family. Yeah. You know what's really cool? Like, uh, you, you know, Orly and Matt, I, like I, just seeing all these questions, like I cannot believe how engaged the audience is. And I, know, I think it makes awesome. me really excited because as I mentioned earlier, like this idea of companion planting, when someone was talking about strawberries and, and cucumbers, it's like, look up companion planting. And there's some, so much interesting stuff when you think about what you curate with uh, the produce that you're growing. So for instance, I love a caprese salad. Did you know that if you plant basil with tomatoes, it makes the basil, oh, the tomatoes taste better. The, the basil has, something where it actually uh, keeps away the pests. So, and then same with garlic, like uh, just look it up. It's just so yeah. interesting. And, you know, this is a great way for anyone who's getting into to, to gardening, into farming, to understand uh, just the mechanics of how it works. And, and lettuce grow is a great way of, of starting that. Yeah, and, and I just want to say that it makes now, I hope that after sitting with Matt for a little bit, you understand exactly why Terry was like, I think Matt James should be our guest this time around. <laughs> so, so completely aligned. So much amazing info. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to hang with us. Yeah. Coming to us from New York, this was such a blast, man. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. The last thing I'm going to leave you all with is I am not a agricultural, uh, I, I didn't study ag in college, I didn't grow up on a farm. Like this is solely off of owning a lettuce grow and everyone's just as capable as I am doing this. So thank you again, get your outer furniture. Yes. Make sure you get a lettuce grow, <laughs> place it strategically and, and happy growing. Yeah, and guys, if you want to keep up with everything that he's doing, follow Matt on his social. We'll put his handle right here. You can keep up with him. Not only will you see all the amazing things he's doing with ABC Food Tours and with Lettuce Grow, but you can vote on things like whether he shaves his beard or not. <laughs> so many awesome options on his social. So be sure to stay stay up to date with him. Thank you so much. Thank for you, being Orly. Here. Absolutely. Thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you, Terry. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Enjoy the rest of your time in LA. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, I just want to remind you all very quickly about the Labor Day promo that we have going on for this month. This huge Labor Day event that we've got going on is a gift with purchase. You will be able to get your very own farm stand. It's a that beautiful 24 piece, which is the one that we've had sitting in between us this entire time. It also comes with all of the seedlings. So it's the 24 piece plus the seedlings that you will pop inside. And as we talked about all the ways in which it's so simple, you literally won't have to do anything. That gift with purchase comes when you guys get a sofa. So whatever sofa you get, whether it's the three piece or moving all the way on, that will come with it. Um, and then of course, I know so many of you are here because of our amazing giveaways. Outer is always super generous when we do these live streams. And today's is a really cool one. You guys are going to get the aluminum conversation set. I got the aluminum, complete beautiful aluminum L-shaped sofa for my front porch. So I am obsessed with the aluminum and that will come with the farm stand as well. So today's is a huge $3,000 value. You guys will get the aluminum collection plus the farm stand, which is so amazing. Okay, well, it is time, Terry, for the product reveal. And what's really interesting about today's product reveal is that this is one of the most highly requested products that you've got that people have said, hey, 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 you know what I could really use? And yeah. it's like so, so, so versatile. Will you tell everybody what's today's product? Yeah, so we've been working on it for a while. And when I tell you what it is, you're like, well, why did that take so long? Well, the product that we're revealing on this live stream is the Ottoman. We are, uh, the, the oh, aluminum ottoman that. is uh, available now. And uh, early next month, first week of September, we'll have the teak ottoman. And, uh, you know, when you look at this, you probably think, wow, Terry, 
Woohoo! Really exciting. But <laughs> as you mentioned, everyone's been asking for it, and it actually took a lot longer uh, to design. And it does not look like it should because it's what four legs, a platform, and a cushion. Well, that's the problem. And that's why it took so long because you know we're known for our outer shell, and uh, on our modular sofas, it's convenient to have the outer shell because you can hide it. <laughs> You can, you can roll it up and hide it behind your seat cushion and then put your, your back cushion over it and uh, it disappears. So yep. for us, it's like, where do you put it on an ottoman? You can't roll it up and put it anywhere. So we were challenged with trying to figure out how to do this. And uh, we have been working on it for quite a long time. You know, the, you're seeing like what the actual solution we came up with, but we worked on Ooh. so many variations. One of the variations was funny. It was, we called it the, the, the kangaroo pouch concept. <laughs> <laughs> and that was where uh, we actually had a little pouch like a kangaroo and we thought that you could maybe stuff the outer shell into the pouch. And uh, while it sort of worked, we, we did uh, what we've done in the past, which is we call it like the leaf blower test, where we put a leaf blower to it and then kind of like saw what happens and it became kind of a bellows and it made it kind of rise up. So, you know, after like over a year and a half, we kind of settled on this design, which is slightly different than our outer shell. Um, yeah, and I'm actually, since you're, since you're talking about it, I'm gonna show you guys what the, you know, what it looks like on the bottom so you can see it sort of in real time here. Uh, you wanna talk yeah. through some of these different elements? Yeah, so, um, you know, this design, while um, there's not a zipper on the back cushion like we have on our seat cushions, it is actually a two-part design where it is actually affixed with Velcro on the bottom. So uh, yep. when you wanna use it, first, there's two things that you see um, on the frame, there's actually the, uh, we call it the anti-slide Velcro belts that go on. And so once you actually put the seat cushion like down, this. yep, it stays in place. Cause uh, there's nothing that like, you can imagine wind will blow it over. We always get comments like, well, what happens with wind? Does it blow off? Well, no, this doesn't blow off. And the idea is that uh, when you actually want to use the outer shell, um, you just, uh, if you can demonstrate poorly, gonna... it's just. Uh... Yeah. So it comes in this little pouch. So you'll have it in the pouch and basically it's like this. So it's the outer shell and you can see the uh, Velcros on both sides and you've got the wooden sort of handles on both sides, right? That make it really strong. So you would attach one side right here to the Velcro, just like normal. And here's our handle. And the other side is now right here on the other side, just like that. So see now if I wanted to pick it up, same thing, right? You can still pick it up just like that. Perfect. And it yeah. holds. And you've got your handle in the front and it's fully covered. And I know, Terry, you mentioned something that yeah. was so great. A pet owner oh, gave you sort of yeah. an interesting use for the outer shell. Yeah, yeah. So I forgot to mention that, you know, like why is an ottoman, why was it so um, in demand and asked for? Well, the reason uh, it's so demand and asked for is because it is a really versatile piece. You think about all of the uses for it. You know, it can act as a coffee table. Um, it can act as, uh, uh, you can add it to your chair and create a chaise lounge. Um, it's a place, as you mentioned, for your furry baby. So if you, if you have cats or dogs and you don't want to get the fur on it, you can just leave uh, the outer shell on it just as, as it's seen and uh, your actual cushion is protected. So there's so many um, things that you can do with it. It becomes extra seating. Um, you know, in a bin, in a bind. So uh, that's what's so great about uh, an ottoman. Yeah, and you know what? We want to uh, really show you this, show you some pretty killer examples of exactly how the ottoman can start to like explode your possibilities. You guys know that outer is modular, right? That's one of the main reasons that it's so amazing is you can always configure it, whether it's the casual dining we showed you earlier or a big long bed. We've shown you a bunch, a bunch of amazing options. But today we want to talk about extreme lounging, <laughs> extreme lounging. Wait till you see this. So we did the same thing. We pitted Sarah Ann and Tabitha, who we love very much against each other. And we made them have a design off of what would their extreme lounging options be. So let's take a look with our very first one. I think our first one here is Sarah Ann. So let's see what Sarah Ann came up with. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is okay. So cool. Okay. So let's take a look. Basically, this looks like we've got, you can see the backs, right? You can see the backs on the sofa. So you can see what's like a corner piece, what's maybe an armless, what's a love seat. And then there's two in the middle there, which look like the Ottoman. So let's take a look at what this actually becomes. Wow. 
Oh my gosh, look at that. Talk uh, about a place you want to hang out or your kids being able to jump on it. It's amazing. I mean, that is absolutely epic. I can imagine everybody like with their back up against the backs and their feet all towards the middle chatting. What would you guys call this? I really want to know what you would name this. Like, it's like a giant pit. Like, what is it? This yeah. is so beautiful. And I mean, it looks absolutely epic. And really, it's amazing. Yeah. This is going to be tough to beat. I think that what you just said is really interesting because um, when you think about sofa and configurations, there's like the three seat sofa, the love seat, the left arm sectional, the right arm sectional, the youth sectional. I don't think there's a name for this. I don't know if this exists, but uh, if you guys have a name, uh, if we want to offer this, what should we call it? Seriously. <laughs> oh my God. Someone just wrote Deep Couch City. Deep Couch City. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Slumber party. I like to call it sanctuary. Oh, these comments are amazing. Sanctuary. You guys are like the best. That. This is so great. Okay, let's take a look. We have another one. So, you know, this one might get beat. You never know. Okay, let's take a look at Tabitha's. Nice. All righty. So Tabitha's design looks like all of the backs go around in a U shape and the front is completely open. So I wonder what this turns. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like in real life. Oh, wow. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Wait, look, do you see like the popcorn? It's like a movie night. Nice. I could imagine like a big outdoor projector, everyone laying back. This is incredible. Okay, you guys are gonna have to come up with a name for this one too. You know what? The it's other cool. one looks like it was maybe more about like talking, everyone faces yeah. in. This one looks like it's more about maybe sitting back and watching something, some sort of a viewing party, outdoor movie night, someone said. You know what I love about this? We, um, you know, we, we uh, talk about like uh, the most comfortable seat in the house, inside or out. This almost looks like the, the most comfortable napping spot. Oh, I mean, you, you could do that. You could sleep like, you know, like when you sleep in a king bed, you get used to it and like one arms to the, and their leg and you're like a all over the star. place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant starfish. Exactly, exactly. This is amazing. Okay, so what I just want to show you guys though is this looks really probably like a lot in like a million pieces. It's actually not that much. The ottoman really does help this come together. So let's take a look at like a seven piece, for example, which is actually what I have in my backyard. I just have it shaped into an L. But this seven piece, if you just faced everything inward, it's literally like taking two couches or an L and closing the gap so that all the outsides are facing out and all the insides are facing in. Yeah. And I know, Terry, you said your five piece is by far your, your most popular right. arrangement, which is this guy right here. That's right. If you imagine just taking those two conversation pieces and sliding them in so the back is in line with the corner pieces, all you would do is put an ottoman in the middle and you would have that giant setup. So this isn't a lot actually in order to make these. And for all of you at home who already own an outer, you're never going to look at your outer the same. You need to <laughs> no. go outside and you need to start playing around and have some kind of an epic movie night tonight because look at what that is. And that just shows the versatility of it. I mean, you know, with the, the five piece, which is our best selling, which is, uh, like you said, uh, three seat sofa and then two of the chairs that um, are opposing each other. You just push, push them all together and you put an ottoman in there, like the width of our sofa cushions is 87 inches. And then the depth yeah. is, I think it's like 66. So you have this, um, more than enough space to be able to nap and have deep seating and a great outdoor movie night. These names, I'm dying. There was like a, a relax and, oh shoot, it, it, it moved past, I can't see it now. It was like a relax and sack or something, <laughs> slumber night. So many, these names are so funny, We have to capture guys. these and You're figure the out how to actually name these, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, it's so great. Um, yeah, I'm seeing all of you. I, I feel like, God, it looks like a tie. It really does look like a tie. Um, okay, let's go into some questions. Let's see if we have any questions about the Ottoman, about the new product design. I'm sure we're gonna have so many. So let's take a look. All righty, our first question is from Karen. Will all the Ottomans be the same size? What are the measurements? Yep, uh, yes, exactly. Everything that we do is uh, we try to make everything modular. Um, our seat cushions for um, the, the teak, aluminum, and all weather worker is a square, 29 by 29 square, and a six inch height. And guess what? Our ottoman's the same. The cushion is 29 by 29 by six. Awesome, awesome. All right, next question. Danielle, I want to design, I want to do a design consult. How do I do it? Do you mind if I take this one? Please do. 
Okay, guys, so when you head to Outer's website, liveouter.com, on the top left hand corner, there'll be a drop down menu. You'll see the option for design consultation. It is completely complimentary. It is a service that Outer provides to you completely free of charge, which is so amazing. Generally, what they will ask of you is a few things in advance, just so you're ready to go. You want to have some photos of your space so that the design consultant can figure out exactly kind of the vibe of what you're working with. You'll need measurements of your space, and you'll also want to be able to answer the question of how do you want to use this space most. Again, it's modular, so you'll be able to switch it around, but you want to know how you can use it. From there, the design consultants will start to create a few different design options for you, generally with the same amount of pieces. So you'll be able to see all the ways you can do it, and then from there, you'll design on which you know which collection teak wicker aluminum what you actually want to go ahead and purchase but it's completely complimentary and it's sitting there on the website waiting for you wow i couldn't have said it any better <laughs> orly yes very happy okay let's see if we have another question although it's so hard not to answer every single one i see strolling uh susan i have the blanket in florida and i love it not for wrapping at this time of year however we drape it on the sofa and it sends the pests away oh that's genius nice. That's great. And I know uh, in Florida, like you are just coming around to the time where it's actually getting really nice to sit outside. So uh, excited for you to actually wrap it around yourself. Because if you watched last uh, month's uh, live stream, you saw how Orly demonstrated all the great ways that I would have never thought of <laughs> to wear the bug shield blanket. <laughs> Yes, I did. I think I turned it into like a skirt, a halter top, a pashmina. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's take a look at our next question. All righty, this one is from KCB577. Um, I'm actually intrigued by the bug shield blanket as I normally get eaten alive by mosquitoes when I'm outside. Does the blanket retain its repellency after multiple washes? Terry, I'm gonna let you take yeah, that one. Um, so uh, we uh, work with a company called Insect Shield. They've been around. Since... Go like this, Terry. Perfect timing, but you've got a fly. I have right a fly flying at me. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly as you're talking about. I need to have an Insect like Shield hat on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we've been working um, with this company that um, their technology has been proven. It's been around since I think at least 2003, and um, it's got a high efficacy. Um, it's approved by the United States military. It's on the combat uniforms. But um, it's, it's guaranteed to last 25 washes. And uh, I think that's more than enough because uh, you think about how often you actually wash your blankets. So yes, it uh, yeah. has efficacy for a very long time. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, next question. Aaron, does the protective layer prevent moisture from morning dew? Um, I'm assuming uh, you're talking about the, the outer cover. shell probably, right? The outer shell, yeah. 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 Why don't you take that one? Terry? Yeah. Yeah. So it does. Uh, when you think about morning dew, it's anything that is uh, uh, like a, a horizontal surface will get wet. So when you have the outer shell on, all you have to do is it takes like a second to actually like take it off. And I usually just toss it over the back and your cushions are dry and ready to use right away. Awesome. I, I actually see a question here that I think is really cool. Can the ottoman morph into a cocktail table? I just want to sort of show if we did that, let's just see. And Terry, we didn't talk yeah. about this, so uh, stop me. But these come off, right? These come they off do. Yep. if you wanted to. So you could take these off. And actually what I think could be really cool is just using your outer shell maybe. You could. So that you have a smooth surface. And you could probably use it for larger things. I wouldn't maybe do like teetering glasses, <laughs> you know, because of the, right? Like here, that wouldn't be the smart thing. But if you wanted to put out like a large cutting board with like, meats and cheeses and the big things on here, I think you absolutely could do that because that's definitely gonna be strong enough. And you could just do it on the cushion as well, right? Like, think about it, like oh, yeah, you, have, that's true. you have the cushion, you can put the outer shell oh, on yeah. and you could have a charcuterie board on top of tray. And that's what I'm saying, yeah. like the versatility of an ottoman is that it can act as a, uh, a coffee table, extra seating. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's absolutely something yeah. that you can do. That makes much more sense. And I did see a comment from Fabio saying, um, please consider giving away a design consultation during the live stream. <laughs> they're, they're complimentary for everybody. Perfect, so yeah. consider it given. I gave it to you, <laughs> head over to the website. Um, okay, let's see, I think we have another question. How do you clean the cushions? Okay, so this is one that I can, I can take because I've had my outer in my backyard now for probably three years maybe. Um, and I just got the white aluminum for my front porch, which is amazing. And we're gonna share that with you guys, that whole reveal on our next, 
our next live stream. But generally, there are two things that I do. The very first is a leaf blower. That was actually a recommendation of Tabitha, who's one of the design consultants. And I have an electric leaf blower. I always just blow off the dust. That way, it doesn't, it won't settle in, right? So that's when I, if I, if I didn't cover it the night before, I will blow it off. The other thing is you just want to use some water, like soapy water, and sort of pour it and like dab. And that, for the most part, will take everything off. You can machine wash them, right, Terry? If yeah, something happened, you, you left them open for a while. Yep. You can machine wash them. Of course. Them. Yep. You can machine yeah. wash them. But otherwise, it's really just a spot clean kind of a situation and the leaf blower so that you're not like rubbing in pollen and stuff like that. Yeah, I would say uh, um, just okay, go to but, the uh, our Live Outer YouTube channel and you'll see um, like I've done some harsh tests with the, the ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce. Oh, that's right. Um, gummy bears, chocolate. Uh, it's easy to clean, but yes, it's, it's all the things ab above, whether it's leaf blower, whether it's just uh, like using a hose, which I often do, or putting it and laundering it in your laundry machine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we have another question. Okay. All righty. <laughs> Will you have a wicker ottoman? I saw that question come in about yes. 32,000 times. <laughs> we are still working on it. And I'll tell you why it's so hard. Our wicker is fully woven. And uh, when you look at the, uh, the teak and the aluminum, they're slats. And the slats allow us to um, actually put those anti-slide uh, straps on it, whereas our ottoman uh, don't. Um, I've worked on lots of variations. I think we will come up with something. But I've done things such as I've actually built um, a, 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 a cushion where half of it, the bottom side, is the outer shell and the top is our fabric and you would flip it around. So tried lots of things, um, still working on it. And again, uh, the difficulty is that, uh, where do you put the outer shell and how do you actually keep the cushion from sliding on or off? So still working on it, yeah. I promise you, I will um, have come up with a solution, but it is a very hard thing to design, believe it or not. I do love that you share uh, the design process with us though, because I think it's really, it's really interesting to hear something, uh, you know, like a little bit of a conundrum that you wouldn't have thought would be a problem. And then you say it and you're like, oh yeah, gosh, that makes so much sense. So I think it's very cool that you are willing to share all that stuff yeah. with us. I think we have time for one more question. Let's, uh, let's take a look. All right, Tom, does aluminum rust? No, uh, Tom, it does not rust at all. Um, the really awesome thing about aluminum is uh, as soon as it's exposed to air, um, basically uh, a layer called aluminum oxide, which is oxygen um, basically reacting with the aluminum, uh, forms on the surface and it makes it basically corrosion resistant. Um, so it never rusts. And on top of that, um, we do have a, a really durable powder coating on it. So it's like a double protection. It will never rust. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, we're going to get ready to do our giveaway. I just want to do a quick reminder about the Labor Day event that we have going on. It's a gift with purchase. I'm sure you guys are as in love with Lettuce Grow now as we are. So when you buy your outer sofa, you will get the 24-piece farm stand from Lettuce Grow. That will be the gift with purchase, which is amazing. And then just a reminder for those of you who see a lot of questions, some of you are considering getting the aluminum, the wicker, the teak. Just a reminder that Outer has a firm available. For those of you that want to space it out, that want to start enjoying it while you're paying for it, you can absolutely do that. A firm is available to, to anybody. So get in there, take a look. And like we said, those design consultations are there for you if you want to figure out exactly which collection you should do, which piece, which setup, all that good stuff. It's all available entirely complimentary for you. Okay, are you ready for the giveaway? This is very exciting. The aluminum conversation set plus the beautiful lettuce grow. Let's see who our winner is. Congratulations, Sarah McLaughlin from Phoenix, Arizona. Yay, Phoenix, it's nice and toasty there. <laughs> oh man. Sarah, I can't wait to see your setup, what you do. You've got to promise us that you're going to send it to Outer on Instagram so that we can take a look at what your little beautiful setup with your Lettuce Grow farm That's stand right. looks like. That's right. I want to see uh, what uh, she is growing in, in the Lettuce Grow. Yeah, yeah. Do you do eggplant? Do you not? I need to know. Um, guys, thank you all so much for being with us. This was a really, really fun one. Thanks again to Matt James for being here. Make sure that you guys follow everything that he's doing. Keep up to date with ABC Food Tours and all the great work he's doing with Lettuce Grow in the schools and everything. So cool. And um, any questions that you guys have, you can continue to comment them in the comment section down below. We'll keep an eye on them. And always read out, reach out to Outer on Instagram, DM, send a message if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, and we're going to do another one of these bad boys next month. So I hope that you'll join us. Terry. 
I missed you. I hope we get to do I this know. next one in person. We will. We will. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next month. All right, guys. Have a great month. Bye. See ya.